Welcome to our Bible study. I'm certainly delighted and grateful that you are here with us on today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us at New Hope Baptist Church, where we truly believe that there is no hope like new hope. We find new hope in God each and every day. And that's one of the reasons why this season is so special. Yes, on the Christian calendar, there are two particular seasons in which uh, Christians all across the world find so much even more uh, joyful and celebratory. And one of them is Easter season or Lent season, and the other is Advent, where we celebrate the incarnation of Christ and God's arrival. And we're going to do a Bible study. We're going to deviate from the Gospel of John just for a little bit. Uh, as in the month of December, we're going to look at Advent, what it means, and some scriptures that speak to the arrival of Jesus Christ. Uh, but before we get into God's word, I ask, will you pray with me? Gracious God, from whom all blessings flow, we thank you, God, for being the God that shows up in our lives. God, tonight, someone needs you in their situation. So we pray, O oh God, in the same way you arrived on earth years ago, that your Holy Spirit manifest its presence and its power in our lives even right now. Bless each and every viewer right now. Bless each and every listener. Bless each and every family, home, and community. God, we need you in the midst of a pandemic. We need you in the midst of so much going on, gun violence and hardship, uh, economic hardship, emotional hardship, mental health challenges. God, your people need you. So we ask, Lord, that you bless us indeed. Be with us, O oh God, for in your presence there is fullness of joy. Be with us, O oh God, because you are the one that gives us peace. Be with us, O oh God, because you are the one who, that can make all things new and make our lives whole. So, God, we thank you in advance for being there for us and being with us. And we pray for anyone right now that feels alone. God, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but there are some that may be dealing with abandonment. There are some that may be having depressed thoughts. There are some that may be having challenges. So God, spread your love. Show your love tonight in this Bible study. Show your love in this world. God, in the midst of so many court cases, so many political tensions, so much racism, so many issues, God, be the light of the world. God, bring us peace, bring us joy, bring us happiness, bring us love. God, we just ask right now for the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, we'll be ever so careful to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the thanks and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In life, there are seasons, there are moments and times in which we are expecting something to happen. We are excited. We cannot wait for things to happen. But the Bible and our faith often calls for us to be patient. Patience is waiting without grumbling. It is confident expectation that something is going to happen. Being willing to wait in the meantime, in the betw in between time, having faith that everything will be just fine. Advent is a great reminder and it beckons us to prepare for the arrival of an infant whose life would change the world, whose ministry, whose impact would change the world. His body was so small, you could cradle him in the palm of your hand. But how many know sometimes big things come in small packages? And this Savior, who was born an infant, we thank God for him. He did not come in the palace. He did not come uh, with lavish things. But he was born in obscurity. He was on the run for two years. He lived in the most oppressed communities in all of the empire. And yet, in Nazareth, born in Bethlehem, this young man who, some would say, grew up in the hood or the projects, blessed each and every aspect of this world, whether rich or poor, black or white, everyone has been impacted by Jesus. And so we celebrate this Advent because we recognize that this was a special moment in history. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 tells us it was at the perfect time. And throughout the next couple of weeks, we'll discuss the, the Maccabean revolts and, and the Apocrypha and some of the things that led up to the Advent. But today, I just want to do a brief synopsis of what Advent is. Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming. Latin derived, the Latin derived word um, comes from the Greek word parousia, which is used when describing the second coming of Christ. 
The purpose of Advent is twofold. First is a celebration of the first arrival of Jesus Christ. And then the second is an anticipation of Christ's return. Yes, I know we don't talk about this often. Yes, Christ was born, Christ has ascended, and Jesus is coming back. So get ready, for the Lord is coming back. Advent gently reminds us of the now and the not yet that comes with being people of faith. That means God is doing things right now. I mean, God is with us right now, but there are things to come. Another way of saying this is already not yet. Where we have already been saved, we have already been sanctified, set apart, but we shall be justified and we shall see God in his glory uh, and the glorification of salvation. And so we can thank God that we've been justified, we've been sanctified, but there's another process that is on the way and that is glorification. And so Advent reminds us of what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is getting ready to do. There's already a plan in place, and it's a fixed fight. You don't have to worry about the enemy defeating you, because God has already placed things in motion that we can celebrate Jesus coming back. You have to believe. and You just have to trust the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. And so continue to believe and be excited about this season. Now, in the meantime, Advent reminds us of the importance of waiting on God, being patient, trusting God, believing that no matter what happens, God's plan and God's will will not be uh, denied or deterred, but wait on God. The people of God had been waiting for a Messiah for years, and so that's why the birth of Jesus was so important. And likewise, we are waiting for the second coming of Christ and having faith in the meantime and patience and waiting on God is so important. For centuries now, scholars have tried to pinpoint the exact date that Advent began as a celebration because we don't see it in biblical times or in biblical records. Uh, and most reliable resources or sources suggested it began in the fourth century, around 380 AD. And they connected it to the December solstice, which was the darkest day and the darkest time of the year. How beautiful it is that Christ's birth Advent and Christmas remind us of how God can turn your darkest moments in life into day. By the fourth century, uh, the first written evidence of Advent is found in modern Spain and Europe, or what some would call back in the biblical times, Hispania and Gaul. Uh, the earliest of... Out. Advent is one of those seasons, one of those times, that a lot of churches just seem to do. Many of our churches, no matter the denomination, no matter the style, the liturgical or low church, all these things, usually have some sort of celebration in the four weeks running up to Christmas. How did this get started? Well, it's actually impossible to determine the earliest dating of Advent. We don't have any real smoking gun here. We don't have a lot of information. By about the fourth century, though, we do begin to see comments about the celebration of Advent. What seems to have happened, of course, is Easter and Christmas become the two more or less fixed celebrations in the life of the church. Easter made a great deal of sense because it was related to the Jewish celebration of Passover. Christians had a different dating for it, a different way to mark the time and determine which Sunday would be Easter. Christmas began to fall on December 25th in part because it was around the darkest time of the year. No one, by the way, believed that Jesus was actually born on December 25th. But since it was the darkest day of the year, and it was already something of a holiday, you might say, in modern lingo, for the Roman world, a celebration of now the dark days will begin to get lighter and lighter as we get towards spring, it only made sense for Christians to begin to celebrate the coming of the light of the world. So once Easter and Christmas especially are fixed, what begins to happen is those become the horizons of so much of the church year the first half towards Easter, the second half towards Christmas. And it seems to have been only natural that the several weeks before begin to take on new significance. You're marching week by week closer to the big date. In this sense, Advent becomes the run-up to Christmas. That really is all it is. Advent is marking the days as we get closer and closer to the commemoration, to the celebration of the birth of our Savior. The earliest real dating that we have of this occurs probably in 380 AD at the Council of Sargossa. This is in the area of modern-day Spain or France. And what had happened is there was a heresy 
called Priscillianism. And this is a Gnostic heresy. It actually is relatively anti-physical, if that makes sense. It is more into spiritualism, and it rejects or it resists any idea that our physical bodies or this creation is made good. And there does seem to be some connection here, because if the heresy you're offsetting is this idea that the physical body, that the physical world is itself evil, well, it seems to be that a good celebration would be Christmas. The day Jesus came, God himself took on human flesh. Whether or not that's the case, we really don't know, but it does seem to be that in 380, there was this commemoration that was doubled down on, not created out of thin air, but it was encouraged that Christians would attend the church services, if possible, once a day. Now, what happens is over time, Advent takes on new significance. But it's not the same as it is today, at least identically. In the historic practice of Advent, there were actually two weeks set apart for a different service or a different focus, and two weeks set apart to focus on Christ in the manger. You see, the word Adventus is a Latin translation of a word in the Greek New Testament, parousia, which is the coming, the entrance of the Lord. Now, the word parousia, and by extension Adventus, refers to two things. First of all, the coming of Christ himself in human flesh but also the coming of Christ again, what we today call the second coming. So Advent in its historic practice actually had two weeks set aside to reflect on the fact that Christ will come again, that all things will be restored on earth as they are in heaven. And then two weeks were set aside to focus on the first coming, Christ in the manger. There really is no controversy about Advent. It is just one of these celebrations, though, that arises over time. And so, By the time you get to the modern era, especially to our time now, Advent is more or less fixed. Now, in the modern church, one of the things that's interesting about Advent is it's a useful way to focus the church, to focus Christians on the importance of the real story behind the Christmas story. It's a way, in other words, of getting them off the consumerism and focusing instead on the one who came to save and the one who will come again. Advent is a great reminder of society's need for a Savior. Just like we need God in our situations and in our world right now, in the midst of COVID-19, in, in the midst of racism, in the midst of unjust law practices, in the midst of brutality, in the midst of unscrupulous uh, financial practices, in the midst of divorces, in the midst of so many things going on in the world, in the midst of gun violence in our communities, we need a Savior. We need God in our situation. Well, the same thing applies to 2,000 plus years ago. The people needed a savior. And what Advent teaches us is that God, in the midst of your cries, in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your shouting, God knows just when you need what you need. And so God shows us that God can show up at the perfect timing. And God's timing is always better than ours. And so Advent, reminds us the joy of something coming to pass that you've been waiting for. Whether you're new to celebrating Advent or you've observed it for many years, I want you, or I want to encourage you to begin nurturing a sense of awe and anticipation in your life for Christ. From the events surrounding his miracle-studded arrival to his unforgettable life, death, and resurrection, those who encountered Jesus Christ were taken aback with a profound sense of wonder. They were amazed at the works of God. And you should never become so complacent that you're not in awe of God. You should be appreciative of what God does, and you should be thankful for what God does and know that God has more power than you. God has more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding than you. So be grateful to God. Now, as you prayerfully consider and reflect on these devotionals, Ask God to open your eyes to him and his handiwork even more. Ask God to show you the way. Ask God to reveal more of his truth of who he is and who you are. Prepare to be astonished by the work of God, what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do all around you during this season of waiting and in the seasons to come. Advent calls all of us to wait just as Abraham and Sarah waited for Isaac, just as the Israelites waited in oppression and in the desert to be delivered set and set free. 
Just as, as the prophets waited to hear a word from God, just as humanity waited for a savior, we wait. And most of us are all too familiar with wait, the waiting rooms of life. We wait for graduation. We wait for a spouse. We wait for a child. We wait for a job. We wait for a promotion. We wait for a diploma, a prodigal child to return, a diagnosis. We wait for healing or for a cure. We wait for another round of chemotherapy. We wait for a retirement party. We wait for so many things. Life is filled with seasons of waiting that become the breeding ground for insecurities and self-doubts as we anticipate what's next. But here I encourage you not just to hold on to God's unchanging hand, but even to find peace in the midst of your wait. Of course, waiting means what you desire has not yet arrived. But sometimes it's the journey and not the destination in life. Sometimes you can just find solitude while you wait. You can dance in the rain or dance in the hallway in, in the midst of the storm or in the midst of waiting for the door to open. You can find peace and joy in the midst of your waiting. And as you wait, while you may become anxious, as you wait, while you may start to wonder, when is it my turn? You start to get stronger in your faith. You start to believe God even more. And in the same boat, sometimes while you wait, God exposes God's greatness to you in amazing ways. Maybe someone else might get what they're waiting for. Maybe someone else may get the promotion, get the healing. Maybe someone else may get the child they've been waiting for. God shows you that God is still in control. And so while you're waiting, I want you to look for signs and symbols of hope rather than doubt and despair. While you're waiting, I want your faith to be strengthened. While you're waiting, I want you to sing that trouble don't last always. The story of the Israelites waiting for Jesus Christ, their Messiah, reminds us that when it comes to waiting, the darkness always precedes the dawn. The journey of God's people was marked by slavery, oppression, hunger, death, disease, war, idolatry, captivity, and so much more. And we shouldn't be surprised when in our waiting, it seems like the light begins to dim. And we look up only to discover that we are surrounded by inky blackness. Such darkness doesn't mean God has left, but the opposite. God is ever present in our weakness and in our waiting. Waiting is not a passive activity, but an active one of strength and resilience. The Hebrew word for wait, yakal, means to wait expectantly and to wait in hope. Waiting can also be understood as meaning to long for. Waiting invites us to grasp for God. Our job is to wait, never losing hope that the flickers of that first light will come. The wonder of Advent is that through you, though you wait, we wait all of humanity waits, and we do not wait alone, but God is with us. We do not wait alone, and we trust that in God's perfect timing, God may be protecting us from danger if we go in too early. God protects us from some things if we rush. You know, haste makes waste. And so I encourage you, find comfort and solace in waiting. In fact, even right now, take a deep breath as we have a brief prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the midst of our waiting, reveal yourself to us. Show us your glory so that we may know with full confidence that God is with us. We are not alone. We are patiently waiting for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read three passages for you, and I want you to let me know in the comments which one speaks most to waiting on God. In Psalm 24, the first one we're going to read, Psalm 24, verses 4 and 5, says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 8 and 9 says, In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. 
And then last but not least, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 25 and 26 say, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So, the question now is, what does each passage reveal to us about waiting on God? I'm a huge fan of both Isaiah 26 as well as Lamentations 3. I love Psalm 24, but in this moment as we're talking about waiting on God, I really, really, really like Isaiah 26 and Lamentations 3. What is meaningful to you right now about waiting on God? What is your favorite scriptures about waiting on God? Many people love Isaiah chapter 40, whatever it may be. And then last but not least, how do you sense God is transforming you as you wait on God? I don't know what you're waiting on God for, but I do know in the process of waiting and trusting the process of God, that God does some phenomenal things to you in your perspective and your life. Some of the things I've learned by waiting on God is one, that God's ways are not my ways. Two, that God's plan is always better than my plan. Three, sometimes God delivers me from some things that I would have rushed into. And God has the wherewithal to know that either I couldn't handle it just yet or what I wanted in that moment may not have been what was best for me. And I thank God for God's protective nature. And God saying, I want you to mature and be patient as you're developing and what you've been waiting for is developing as well. Thank God for being aware of the seasons in our life and God preparing us for the next season. So I encourage you, just as you are waiting patiently on God and believing God for whatever it is, don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. Let God do the work. And as you continue to wait on God and God does something amazing in your life, you can rejoice. and You can thank God when it comes. That's really it for the Bible study tonight. But I just wanted to close out with the song that we love to sing at New Hope Baptist Church when pe the people of God celebrated God being with us. Have a great night. Thanks for tuning in. We love you with the love of Christ. God bless. Come. Come. Let us. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, say it again. Come. Come. Let us. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. In your presence, Lord. Worship. Worship and adore him. Help me say. Come down. I dare you learn to praise him even in the midst of a trial. 